Lesson 8.3c, Finding a Percent Given a Part and a Whole. We can use proportional reasoning to find a percent. It's asking 84 is what percent of 300? We can multiply or divide. If we multiply, we're going to put our unknown percent over 100, and we've got our 84 over the 300. This is the part, this is the whole. Because we're going from a 100 to a 300, we're going to multiply by 3. If we go this way and write the part and the whole that we know on the left side, well, then we're going from 300 to 100, so we're going to have to divide to go down to 100. In part A and B of this lesson, we used this problem, that Dave sold 300 t-shirts, of which 84 were long-sleeved. What percent of the t-shirts sold were long-sleeved? Now, look at these. We know he sold 300, and 84 were long-sleeved, and we're looking for the percent. It says what percent. This says 84 is what percent of 300. This one says of 300, 84 is what percent. And this one says, what percent is 84 of 300? And this one says, what percent of 300 is 84? Well, all of these are asking the same question. What is the percent? They're giving us the part. They're giving us the whole. They're asking, what percent? What percent? So it may be asked in different ways, but if you have a sharp eye, you'll be able to see that it says, what percent? So you know you're looking for the percent. We have our whole, we have our part, and we have enough to use proportional reasoning to find the percent. Jim sold 50 candy bars for a school fundraiser. His father bought eight of the candy bars. What percent of the candy sold was purchased by his father? So we know the candy that he sold was 50. We know his father bought eight. We need to find what the percent is. We think. What percent of 50 is 8? We have an unknown percentage of 50 is equal to 8. We have our whole and our part. We know the part and the whole and can write them as a ratio and then solve with proportional reasoning. His father bought 8, that's the part. He sold 50, that's the whole. We want to write it over 100 and 50 times 2 is 100. We're going to multiply because we're going from a 50 up to a 100. So we're going to use multiplication. And we're going to use the factor 2. We're going to multiply 8 times 2, and that gives us 16. That's 16%. 16 it's 16 hundredths. The percentage means out of 100. So Jim's father bought 16% of the candy bars. 16% of 50 is 8. Emma read 180 pages of a 300-page book. What percent has she read? We know the part she read was 180, and we know the whole, that's how many pages are in the book. We need to write it over 100 to find the percent. We think, well, 300 needs to go down to get to 100, so we're going to divide. We can divide by 3. That means we're going to divide the 180 by 3, and 180 divided by 3 is 60. That means she read 60% of the book. Now, for cross products, we can multiply 180 times 100. That's going to give us 18,000. And we can multiply 300 times 60. That's going to give us 18,000. The product of numbers on the diagonal when comparing two ratios is the cross products. And if they have the same product, the ratios are in proportion to each other. They have a proportional relationship. So multiplying 300 to the 60 and then multiplying the 180 to the 100, we get the same product. We know that they are in proportion to each other. So cross products are when we multiply, making a cross coming down like this, and getting the product, and then coming across and up like this and getting a product, that's cross products. So 4% part and whole, the percent is the number out of 100. It's this unknown number out of 100. 
The part is a piece of the whole amount, and the whole, which is sometimes called a base, is the original amount, or price, or total. 25% of 80, that's the whole, is 20, that's the part. If we split this into four parts, each part will be 25%. Each part will be one-fourth. And if we split 80 into four equal parts, one part, which would be one-fourth, 25%, is going to be a 20, because that would be 20, that would be 20, that would be 20, that would be 20. Now, some teachers, some textbooks use this box, and it's showing the part, the whole, the percentage, and it, the percent is over 100. And this kind of breaks down and shows what's going on with the problem. And we can see 20 80ths is equal to 25 one hundredths. They're both equal to 1 fourth. 20 80ths is equal to 1 fourth when it's simplified, and 25 hundredths is equal to 1 fourth when it's simplified. Now we know there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. It's very important if you're following along at the textbook that you'll understand what we've taught so far. But look at this. 7 is what percent of 35? So we need to find the percent. We can find a missing element, like this percent, in a problem, in a percent problem, by finding a cross product and dividing it by a third number. 7 is a part, 35 is the whole. We need to find the percent, the number over 100. So what we do is 7 times 100, which is 700, and then we divide it by the third number, and in this case it would be the whole. We're going to divide it by 35, and we get 20. That means this is 20%. 7 is 20% of 35. Now there's even another way to solve this. If we see 7 as the part and 35 as the whole, we can reduce this to a unit fraction of 1 -fifth. And we know that 5 times 20 is equal to 100, so we just multiply the numerator by 20 and we get 20 hundredths, which is our 20 hundredths, which would give us 20%. We find a cross product, we're going across like this, and then we divide it by the third number. And this method would work for any of the missing boxes, any of the missing values. If the whole was missing and we had the percent, the part, and this 100, well, then we could do the 7 times 100 and divide it by this as the third number. If we're missing the part, we can do the percent times the whole and divide it by the 100 to find the missing part. So the box, as long as you're coming across and then dividing by the third value that you haven't used yet, then you'll get the missing value for the other box. So we're finished with this lesson. We're going to move on to the last part of 8.3. Find a whole given a part and a percent. It's very important you completely understand 8.3a, b, and c before we move on to the next one. I want you to totally understand these lessons because they'll help you as you move forward in math. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.